After last night's call, it actually almost seems redundant uh, to talk about Tesla. <laughs> but I mean, it was, seriously, was that the funniest friggin' call ever? So the name of this presentation is Tesla is still a zero. And that's a play on a presentation I gave at the Robin Hood conference in November 2016, which was called Tesla is a zero. And when I gave that presentation, the stock was in the 180s. And around six months later, it was in the 380s, which is my way of saying that that's a better disclaimer even than this is. <laughs> so three broad reasons why the equity in Tesla is worth zero. Number one, Tesla's financials are horrible and worsening even before massive competition begins arriving later this year. Number two, Tesla has no moat of any kind and in fact now possesses trailing technology in all facets of its business. And by the way, I can go into the weeds on all of this stuff, so grab me any time and I'll explain these, these things. And number three, a bet on Elon is a bet on someone who can't be trusted. He has a long track record of making hugely misleading statements. Now, I know Tesla Longs think it's all about the future. And by the way, I'm sure there are zero Tesla Longs in this room because this is a short selling conference. But for the general public, I know Tesla Longs think it's all about the future. So here's just a quick look at the current financials. Q1 2018 gap loss, excluding Zev credit sales, was $760 million. This is the, re the report they did yesterday. That's a loss of over $25,000 per car sold. Now, this loss was not because Tesla is in quote unquote growth mode. Porsche sells two and a half times as many cars as Tesla and is a slow grower. And yet, if we adjust Q, uh, this should be Q1 Tesla gap loss. I, didn't, I forgot to change that last night. To Porsche's level of R&D, uh, which is 9.9% of revenue, Tesla still would have lost over $24,000 a car, excluding Zev sales. And the Zev sales only made a difference of between one and 2,000 a car. So even on a gap basis, they, they lost that. Q1 2018 Model S and X sales were down double digit percentages year over year. There's your hyper growth. And sequentially, even before much nicer luxury EVs roll out from Jaguar, Audi, Mercedes, and Porsche later this year and, and next year. And what about the Model 3? We'll cover that later. So Tesla is now 15 years old. How's that profitability scale coming along? Let me give you a hint. 2009 is on the left. <laughs> this is the quarter they reported yesterday, okay? Those are the losses. Tesla has, this is, this is also wrong. I have to fix this, I apologize. It has around 2.3 billion, not 3 billion, in negative net working capital. Q1 free cash flow was over negative $1 billion. Tesla could literally declare bankruptcy before the cocktail hour later. But Tess Lemmings say Tesla is worth its $60 billion enterprise value because it's all about the future. Okay, let's look at that future. A massive number of long range electric cars will soon be on the market, often at prices subsidized by profits from their makers' conventional vehicles, an option Tesla doesn't have. Additionally, here in the US, Tesla's $7,500 tax credits will expire in late 2018 while competitors will just be starting to use theirs. So pricing pressure on Tesla will be intense. Here's the competition Tesla faces in electric cars. The Jaguar I-Pace is in showrooms this summer. It's priced $10,000 less than the least expensive Tesla Model X, and it's much nicer. It'll be $17,000 less expensive when Tesla's tax credits run out. Now, in fairness, this is a little bit smaller than the X. This doesn't have the third row seat. But I think a lot of people buy the X because they want an electric SUV and don't need that third row seat. That's just the only choice that they've had in, in a luxury model. Well, that, that's changing. The year after, the Jaguar XJ sedan is going electric. So that's directly against the Model S. Audi has its electric SUV. This is bigger than the Jag. This is in showrooms this winter. This is priced roughly comparable to the least expensive Tesla Model X. It'll be roughly $5,000 cheaper when Tesla's tax credit runs out, right around the time this thing is on the market. Audi's then, a year later, gonna build the electric Sportback, which is like this sportier sort of crossover coupe, which is fabulous looking. Porsche has the electric sedan, the Mission E. Maybe you guys heard about this. I mean, think about this. A lot of people buy Teslas to sort of show off at the country club, right? Now I'm driving my electric Tesla. You pull up in your Tesla, and this guy pulls up next to you in the new electric Porsche, you feel like a total schmuck. 
The next weekend, you're at the dealer. Get me out of this thing. Get me one of those. That's what's going to happen. Two years after that, Porsche is building a crossover based on the Mission E. Um, so that'll be out in like 2020. Mercedes, its first electric SUV comes out next year called the ECQ. They've been winter testing it. By the way, none of these are vaporware cars. You can go on YouTube and find hundreds of these being driven in like winter testing on, on the Nuremberg racetrack, all this stuff. I mean, these are all real. Mercedes is then going to launch an electric version of the S-Class. I mean, look at the interior of an S-Class compared to a Tesla, right? If you had that choice and you want an electric car, I mean, this becomes a no-brainer, right? This is out in two years. Mercedes wheels out electric car roadmap, car and battery factories everywhere. I mean, this is Daimler, a real company, spending real money all over the world to build electric cars. I mean, they alone would crush Tesla. Hyundai is coming out with a 250-mile range crossover for the mass market. That's out later this year as a 2019 model. This is sort of the vaporware Tesla Model Y that we will probably never see. This is available, as I said, later this year. 14 new EV models by Hyundai by 2025. The Bolt is out now. It's a great little car, selling, pre selling pretty steadily. I don't know, maybe 2,000, 2,500 a month. And believe it or not, even the Bolt has taken away from Tesla sales because for a while it was the only other 200 plus mile electric car available. And if you didn't want a Model S, uh, you could buy this Bolt now if you didn't want to spend the money on an S before you didn't have that choice. GM's going electric on all kinds of models. Nissan Leaf, now the one that's out now, the new one is 150 mile range, <clears throat> but uh, next year they're going to have a 220 mile version of the Leaf. Maybe even later this year it'll be out. And then they're going to build a crossover based on that Leaf. First electric Volvo is out next year. Volkswagen, this is a two year car, a 300 mile sort of crossover for $30,000. And then after that, a luxury Volkswagen sedan that'll have a 400 mile range. And you know, again, all these cars, we're talking about cars that are going to be out anywhere from this summer to maybe a year and a half from now. And people own Tesla, they're like, oh, it's, I'm buying it for the year 2030, right? But they're not forward looking enough to see something that's going to be out in you know, six months, eight months, whatever, which is just absurd. VW will build EVs in 16 factories in a zero emission push. I mean, they're spending tens of billions of dollars on this stuff. BMW is going to export the iX3 electric crossover. They're building it in China. They're going to send it to Europe and the US. This car's out in two years. Then BMW is going to have this flagship electric car called the i4. BMW's electric car future mapped out. 25 pure EVs and hybrids by the year 2025. Ford plans $11 billion investment in electrified vehicles. New Land Rover Defender goes electric. Toyota is going to market over 10 battery EV models by the early 2020s. Toyota, Mazda, and Denso creating company to hasten electric car development. Infiniti will go mostly electric by 2021. PSA is going to have multiple, this is Peugeot, they're going to have multiple electric models. All electric Mini Cooper coming next year. Smart car is going to be electric only within two years. Seat confirms launch of 311 mile electric car. Opel launching full electric car in two years. Skoda, next year electric car. MG E-Motion confirms new EV sports car by 2020. Aston Martin is going to create an all-electric car brand. Renault, um, I actually, the wrong thing is highlighted here. It should, oh, um, yeah, it should be on the bottom. But six pure electric vehicles, 12 electrified models are on the way from these guys. Rolls-Royce is going to build an all-electric Phantom. Citroën, all electric cars coming. Honda will offer full EV or hybrid tech on every European model by 2025. New all electric Bentley based on the Mission E is coming. This is for when you have a good year, you get the Bentley. When you don't have a good year, you get the Porsche. Subaru, all electric by 2021. Plus at least eight significant startups. Some of these may or may not make it, but they all have interesting stuff coming. Dyson, Lucid, Borgward, Detroit Electric, SF Motors, NEVS, E-Velocity, and Faraday. And what about China? Daimler launches new Denza electric vehicle for the Chinese market. This car's out now. BAIC and Daimler are building a $1.9 billion China plant. By the way, just to back up a second, people talk about, oh, the opportunity for Tesla is China. Tesla is already buried in China. I mean, you're going to see an unbelievable amount of stuff sound like Trump. Unbelievable amount of stuff coming in China. Volkswagen plans $12 billion electric car blitz in China. 
Audi to launch seven new energy vehicles in, in China by 2020. Toyota to introduce 10 new electrified vehicles in China by 2020. A uh, big portion of future GM electric vehicles for China. Nissan to invest $9.5 billion in China to boost electric vehicles. Infiniti bringing EVs to China. BMW will develop and produce electric mini in China. Ford ramps up electric vehicle push in China. China's BYD tops global electric car production for third year in a row. SAIC to spend 15 billion RMB on EVs. Electric Honda HRV to be launched in China. Mazda and Chang'an Auto join hands on electric vehicles. Weltmeister EX5 electric SUV launched. Neos ES8 electric crossover debuts with half the Tesla Model X's price tag. Geely to build new, new energy vehicle production base in eastern China. Great Wall starts new EV brand in China. FAW to roll out 17 models, mostly electric, by 2025. JAC is another Chinese brand, 500 kilometer range electric car. Tesla has over 300 Chinese startups hot on its tail. Here are some of the better known Chinese startups. They're all linked on the presentation if I send it to you. Point being like, Tesla could announce a Chinese factory deal, you know, tomorrow, right? And people are like, oh, and Phil LeBeau on CNBC would talk about it. Spike the stock, $30. It would be freaking meaningless. There is already millions of electric car capacity either there now or there long before that factory can be open, and they'll just be a, a drop in the ocean if, if, they, if they don't go bankrupt first. But what about electric car batteries? Tesla's a battery company, right? And what about the Gigafactory? Tesla's battery cells are made by Panasonic. Panasonic's so-called investment in the Gigafactory is really a capital lease of its equipment to Tesla. Tesla uses a small cylindrical cell that, because it's expensive to assemble into packs, has been obsoleted by new, larger format cells. No other automaker even wants to use them. Think about that. All those slides I showed you are clean sheet designs. Any single one of them could use the same format Tesla's using because Panasonic will sell those batteries to anybody. None of them want to use it. It doesn't make sense to use that. Tesla's married to it because when it first designed its battery packs in sort of the mid-2000s, this other option wasn't available. That's one of the things I mean by them now being with, on trailing edge in technology. Panasonic happily sells these larger cells to Tesla's competitors. Because of Tesla's locked-in purchase agreements to Panasonic, and by the way, I think it's $16 billion or maybe more of purchase commitments that are on the balance sheet to Panasonic, it may now be paying significantly more for batteries than its competitors. So here's where Tesla's electric car competition will get batteries. <clears throat> LG, Samsung, SK Innovation, huge Chinese company. Um, Toshiba, Panasonic, selling, I mean, <laughs> selling to anybody who wants them. Uh, the European Battery Alliance is putting together a consortium to build factories in Europe. Northvolt is a, a well-financed new startup in Europe. Uh, CATL is a giant uh, Chinese company. And, and in summary, China to build many gigafactories worth of electric car battery plants. China wants to dominate this business. Plus, many car makers and suppliers are investing in solid state batteries that by the mid-2020s will completely obsolete lithium ion batteries in Tesla's gigafactory. OK, but what about battery storage? That's the real Tesla opportunity, right? Battery storage is at least as competitive as electric cars. In Q3 2017, the last quarter for which Tesla broke out storage financials, that division had a negative 32% gross margin. The gross margin is still negative. They admitted it in the press release yesterday, but they wouldn't say how negative. <clears throat> but you can see year over year, that they group together on one line, solar panels and batteries. It's all one group called um, energy, storage and production or something like that. A year ago, when they did almost nothing in storage, the gross margin there was in like the high 20%. It was all solar panels. Yesterday's report had it at, at low single digits, and it was all because they did this Australian battery deal, which got all the press. They did that deal guaranteed at a huge loss because Samsung sold them the batteries for that deal. Samsung has its own storage you know, division. I mean, they bid on contracts. They probably saw the stupid money losing bid Tesla put in. They said, screw it. We'll sell those idiots the batteries and let them lose money on the deal. And that's exactly what happened. And you can see it in the financial statement if you sort of, you know, read into it a little bit. So battery storage, Panasonic, who, by, by the way, Panasonic and Samsung supply Tesla, right? 
So isn't that a great strategy when you compete in the business against the people that you have to buy their product from and then resell it? That's what's happening here. LG, <clears throat> BYD, Siemens plus AES formed a company called Fluence, GE, Bosch, Mitsubishi Hitachi, Hitachi Chemical, Toshiba, NEC. I mean, this is why it's a terrible business. ABB, Saft, Enersys, Johnson Controls, SolarWatt, ESS, Nissan, Schneider Electric, Sonin, Kokum, Sharp, Eaton, Lockheed Martin, Tesvolt, plus at least 35 other companies that are selling storage batteries. But Tesla has 120 kilowatt superchargers. What about those? Multiple networks are now rolling out chargers of 150 to 350 kilowatts, all faster and collectively far more numerous than Tesla's. Electrify America, Porsche, by the way, this was hilarious. Porsche's building 350 kilowatt chargers. They're putting them at all their dealers in this country, probably worldwide, and a bunch of other locations. And someone asked Musk about it on the call yesterday, and he's like, well, Porsche doesn't know what they're talking about. Nobody should go faster than 200, right? This guy's telling, saying Porsche doesn't know what it's talking about, right? How many, how, what kind of a racing and car history do they have? All right, um, sorry, I got distracted. E <laughs> EVgo, Tritium, Ionity, Shell, Eon, Enel. These are all building out faster and bigger charging networks than, than Tesla's. Oligo, ChargePoint, um, PodPoint in the UK, the National Grid in the UK, FastNed, and BP. You know, what's going to happen is BP, Shell, all these guys will put charging stations at their gas stations as the number of electric cars grows. They'll be all faster and more numerous than Tesla's stations. <clears throat> But what about autonomous driving? Isn't Tesla a leader there? Navigant's leaderboard ranks Tesla dead last in autonomous driving technology. Leaders include General Motors, Waymo, and Daimler-Bosch. There's growing evidence Tesla's autopilot handles lane dividers poorly. Yeah, no kidding. Remember this crash a few weeks ago? Tesla Model S has higher insurance losses than other large luxury cars. Cars. This is the, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. Big story in the Wall Street Journal last summer. Tesla's push to build a self-driving car sparked dissent among its engineers. Elon Musk's ambitious plans for autopilot technology prompted safety warnings and resignations. And by the way, a, another guy quit. They've had three people uh, last month. They've had three people running that program in the last year and a half. I mean, it's a, it's a total disaster. Does auto steer really deserve credit for a 40% reduction in Tesla crashes? If you recall, Musk has been citing this alleged statistic from the NHTSA. It, the story broke yesterday. It, there was already evidence that he was making this shit up. But the story broke yesterday that, he, that they blatantly lied because the NHTSA came out and said, no, we never said that. That's Tesla's statistic that they made up. But what about the $35,000 mass market Model 3? Isn't that the real reason to own Tesla? <clears throat> a base Model 3 would cost Tesla at least mid 40000 thousands to build. So it can either sell them at a gigantic loss starting at 35000 or as it's doing now at 49000 mandate a larger battery and other options, and thus price them into a much smaller market segment. In fact, Tesla recently acknowledged that it won't make any $35,000 Model 3s until at least late this year or early next year, and I predict they won't build more than a tiny handful at that price just to claim they did it. Bernstein estimates that fewer than 30% of current Tesla owners with Model 3 reservations completed their orders when invited to do so. Forms indicate that the percentage among non-Tesla owners is much lower, maybe as low as 10 or 15%. Besides a massive number of Tesla forum posts indicating that the Model 3 is a lemon, its touchscreen-only interface means operating it is the dangerous equivalent of texting while driving. You literally can do almost nothing on this car without taking your eyes off the road and looking down at a touchscreen. <clears throat> and how will Tesla service a high-volume Model 3? They are already plagued by service delays. Okay, despite all the competition and profitability issues, Maybe you want to own Tesla because you believe in Elon Musk. Really? Elon Musk, June 2009. Tesla will cross over into profitability next month. Elon Musk, February 2016. We do not discount our cars for anyone, including me. Fact, 
Since July 2015, Tesla has regularly run a discount referral program and offered four and five year figure discounts on thousands of brand new inventory cars. New lawsuit alleges Musk knowingly lied about Model 3 production. You guys got to find this. It's online. I actually posted it on, on Scribd or whatever that site is. It's unbelievable. The, the lawyers interviewed 11 former employees and executives, and they all said they continually warned Musk that what he was telling the public was total BS, it could not happen, and Musk went and did it anyway. Just say no to Tesla's misleading gross margin metric. Don't have time to get into the weeds here, but trust me, what Tesla calls gross margin on an industry-wide standard is total bullshit. Tesla fools the media about Model S and Model X demand, always giving out misleading statistics. You know, the orders are higher than they were at the same time last year, meaning like that particular hour a year ago. I mean, these guys are just total manipulators of bogusness. Tesla's correspondence with the SEC shows a pattern of ina inaccurate, incomplete, and misleading disclosures. Now, there's a theory going around that the reason they haven't sold stock and didn't do it in the 300s because they're running out of cash is there, it's, is there maybe an SEC investigation going on now? I don't know that that's the case, but that's the theory that for some reason they can't get a registration statement through. If anybody has any insight into that, I'd be happy to hear it. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying that's a theory. Tesla, check your full self-driving snake oil expiration date. In other words, their claims are total bogus. And again, without getting too far into the weeds, they don't have the hardware required to do it. You need LiDAR, which is a laser thing. They didn't build it into the cars. Musk talked merger with Solar City CEO before sale of stock. This is a, a lawsuit going on now. How Tesla and Elon Musk exaggerated safety claims about autopilot and cars. Tesla's timeline shows Musk's morality is highly convenient. Tesla has had a stunning number of executive departures. Jim Chanos recently said the only companies in which he'd seen something similar were Valiant and Enron. The list with which he provided me is so long it requires three slides. <clears throat> it's absolutely amazing. And it's like accelerating the departures. Like the third slide is in a much more uh, recent period of time, compact time, than the first two slides. And finally, Tesla does not need to ever raise another funding round. Elon Musk, February 2012. Subsequent equity and unsecured debt financings. September 2012, 195 million. May 2013, 913 million. February 2014, 2 billion. August 2015, 652 million. May 2016, 2 billion. March 2017, 1.4 billion. August 2017, 1.8 billion. Soon, many more billions if the SEC allows it and anyone gives it to them. Thank you.